All right, test 4.5, 4.8 review. These are the problems I've picked out. All right, first one, we're asked to graph two full periods of y equals sine x. You can do this from all that practice we did in class. I'm going to do it over here on the right, remembering that sine starts and stops on the axis. We're graphing two full periods, and it just comes down to remembering what your values are, knowing that this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi and 4 pi. I think we've done this enough that I don't have to be quite as meticulous knowing this is uh, positive 1 and negative 1. Cosine starts and stops on the amplitude though, so that looks like this. Knowing that this is the first period with this being 2 pi, but if I'm going to graph two full periods I just continue this graph like that. Knowing that this is pi over 2, this is pi right here, and so forth, which you can make a little more neater in your, your work. When we start transforming our graphs, we have to analyze the A, B, C, and D. Uh, if I'm going to do number 91, I would see that A is equal to 5. My B is equal to 2, I can't really see that very well, it looks like 2 fifths, which means that my period is 2 pi divided by 2 fifths, which is the same thing as 2 pi times 5 over 2, which is equal to 5 pi. If I want to find my increment, that would be 5 pi over 4 because there are four even divisions of it. Uh, let me pause for a second. I was just confirming that was in fact a 5, but we got our increment, we got our period, and our amplitude. Now we can just go ahead and graph this. There is no phase shift, so this is going to start and stop on its axis. Let me go ahead and put out uh, the ending value, which is the period, 5 pi. If I'm graphing this freehand, pretty simple stuff, 5 pi over 2, counting by 5 pi over 4. And 5 pi over 2 plus 5 pi over 4 is, well, this is 10 pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 4 is 15 pi over 4. And then 20 pi over 4 is obviously 5 pi. Sine starts and stops on its axis, has an amplitude of 5. So it's going to write 5, negative 5, and it just graph like this. But I think we've done enough of those. You can do it pretty well. In fact, uh, I think it should be pretty easy for you to do this one. And the vertical shift of 2, so you can do that on your own. Uh, let's do 94 just because it's got that pi in there and some of you might have forgotten how to do that. So let me go ahead and erase this. So I'm going to do number uh, 94. So we have a D of negative 4, that means it shifts down 4. We have a negative cosine, so instead of starting and stopping high, it's going to start in, in low. And the pi is my b, which means that my period is 2 pi divided by pi, which means this is equal to 2. My increment is a fourth of that, so it's 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. I have a vertical translation of 4. That means I got 1, 2, 3, 4. There is a new oscillating axis down here. I need to go 2 more than that because my amplitude, uh, excuse me, my amplitude is 1, so it doesn't need to go that much further. It's going to have 2 as my period. Half of that is 1. Then we have a uh, one is, and then half of that is 1, and then uh, 1 and a half. And cosine starts and stops on its amplitude, but this is negative cosine, so it's going to start and end low halfway through here. It's there. And we have one period. Just finish off the other period by following the pattern. That's pretty simple. Let me do one of the ones with the phase shift. Like number 96. Number 96 has an amplitude of 3. It has uh, f uh, a B of 1 and a D of 0, so that doesn't do anything. But it's got a C of negative pi. Now, I think it's best to just go ahead and set this equal to 0 and set it equal to 2 pi and solve both those equations. So let's go ahead and do that. T is equal to negative pi and T is equal to pi. Notice the period is still 2 pi. Our increment is still pi over 2. But in this case, we're on the we're left pi and right pi. And this is cosine, so cosine starts and stops on its amplitude. The amplitude in this case is 3, so negative 3 starts and stops on it. Halfway through here, it, uh, it crosses right here and here, and it goes down here like this. This is the first period. Just go ahead and finish this off with two full periods, like it says in the directions. Awesome. Let's, uh, this uh, number 97 is talking about a sound wave. We have a period of 1 over 264. Remember, the period formula is 2 pi divided by b which we derived in class. So if I need to find uh, the equation, I've got to find the b, because that's multiplied by x, and I have my amplitude given to me, so that's pretty simple. I'm going to multiply both sides by b, and then divide by uh, divide by 1 over... Now let me just write that out. So we have b times 1 over 264 equal to 2 pi. 
That means if I'm going to solve for B, I need to multiply both sides by 264. And 2 times 264 is 528. 528, and we still have that pi. So we have B, we have A, now we just plug it in. Y equals the A, which is 2, and this is sine, and 528 pi times X. What is the frequency of the sound wave? The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So this is 264 hertz because this is in a second and this is 264 oscillations per second. This is just an application problem of a sine function. You can actually answer the B and C without actually graphing this because the amplitude, 1.41, and what does it represent in the model? Notice we're talking about uh, sunset time. So this is the, uh, the highest off of the highest that it can be. So the difference between the um, earliest and the latest that it changes is actually two times the amplitude because an amplitude is half of the difference. So we have a maximum value and a minimum value. This is half of 1.41 is half that distance, which is the change between the minimum and maximum. What is the period of the function? Notice our b is pi over 6. 2 pi over b is equal to our period. So it's just 2 pi divided by pi over 6. Remembering that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. That means the period is equal to 12. Awesome. And obviously that goes with time and we're scaling this by 12 months all the way up. Let's go to the next one. We're asked to graph uh, two full periods. I'm just going to remind you of the key concepts, uh, but I don't have time in the video to go through all the details that you need to do. I'm just going to emphasize it. Remember the asymptotes for tan are negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and it's a rising rising graph crossing through 0, and the quarter mark, it's up 1. This quarter mark right here, it's over down 1. That is the tan function. Parent cotan function, on the other hand, is asymptotes at 0 and pi. So this is at pi, and it is a falling function, like this. Remember, at the quarter mark, it's up 1. Quarter mark over here, it's down 1. That's the cotan function. Those parent functions need to be in your head when graphing manipula manipulated uh, cotan and tan functions. So like on this one, I'll just start you off. Know that t minus pi over 4 needs to be set equal to the original asymptotes, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And you solve that, they get your new asymptotes, and then you do the asymptote, you divide it, and it, you go like this, wherever that's at. And like I said, I don't have a lot of time in the video to do this because YouTube cuts it off if it's too long. And cotan, very similar. You set 2t equal to 0 and 2t equal to pi because the asymptotes of cotan are 0 and 2 pi. This 2 right here affects, say we have um, our asymptotes here and here. Say it's a falling graph. This value right here is now 2 instead of 1 because of that 2. Notice that the secant value goes with cosine. So if I cosine function looks like this, this being 2 pi, the cosecant has an asymptote every time it crosses the oscillating axis, and then it has shares the extrema, which is the minimums and maximums. That is the secant graph. Alrighty, secant graph, same deal. If you're going to graph, I think we've done enough of these, you're going to graph this function, set this equal to 0 and 2 pi, that tells you new beginning and end. Cosecant, on the other hand, goes with sine. Sine looks like this. Where, there are a where it crosses the oscillating axis, there are asymptotes for cosecant, and then they share the extrema, minimums and maximums, just like that. So to graph this function, you set that equal to 0 and 2 pi. Keep this here. Graph the corresponding sine function, and you got it. So let's go into the graphing utility. This is just talking about the damper function. Uh, might have a few of these in the test. Just make sure you're able to establish that. Y equals X is this. We also have a negative corresponding one. And cosine starts high, ends high. And it's going to look something like this. Keeping in mind that when cosine has an output of 1, that gets multiplied by this. So it shares that value. And when this is negative 1, it shares the negative of that, which is negative X. All right. We're asked to evaluate the expression, keeping in mind that arc sine has these two quadrants of the unit circle. So does arc tan, whereas arc cosine has the uh, top of the graph because that's when it changes. So this is looking at the unit circle and saying, where does sine have a negative 1 half? Sine has a negative 1 half right here, which is negative pi over 6. Once again, I'm getting these values from the unit circle. So all of these are the arc sine values, pretty much the same deal. If it's not on the unit circle, you have to use a calculator. 
I know that, so obviously it would be on the calculator portion. So all these other ones, this one, this one, this one, and this one, you simply type in, not this one, this one is unit circle because it's negative one. You'd simply type it in. Now if it's negative one for arc sine, that is at negative pi over two on the unit circle. The same deal here for cosine and, and this, but we're keeping in mind we're using these up here. Let me clean up. So, if I were looking for arc cosine square root of 3 over 2, arc cosine is this, square root of 3 over 2, and that's pi over 6. I'm getting this from the unit circle. The unit circle is in my head, so if you don't have it in your head, you're going to have to pull out the unit circle. Cosine is negative 1 over at pi. Pi, easy stuff. Square root of 2 over 2, right there, pi over 4. Square root of 3 over 2, I think this is the same thing as this. That was silly. Okay. Uh, same deal. These problems, you're just going to type it in because they're not on the unit circle values. Keep in mind that arc tan is the first and fourth quadrants with these being negative angles. All right, use a graphing tool to graph the function. I decided not to put any functions on the, this test that actually have to graph them. But if you did, you'd have it on your calculator. Just make sure that your, uh, your window is appropriate and you can use the graph to actually help you set up a good win window. All right, now we get into some that have blended cosine and tan, uh, bl blended trig functions. Number 127 says, what's the cosine function cosine ratio that goes with the angle that has a tangent ratio of 3 fourths. So all you do is just set up a triangle with tan of 3 fourths. Call this theta or whatever you want to do, 3 over 4 because it's opposite over adjacent. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's 4 over 5. Easy stuff. Pretty much the same thing for all of these. So I don't think I need to go through those, but you will for your review. Down here, we're asked to write an algebraic expression. Same deal. This is the tan ratio that goes with the angle that has a cosine ratio of x over 2. So we set it equal like this. Cosine is adjacent, if I call this the angle, over the hypotenuse. I could do this x over 2 or whatever. I probably should do that because it's cleaner. So I'm going to write x right here, and I'm going to write 2 right here. I could write x over 2 over 1, but hey, whatever. Doing the tan stuff, you have to do the Pythagorean theorem. This is 4 minus x squared, square root all. Tan is the opposite over the adjacent, so 4 minus x squared, square root all, divided by x. That is the tan of that. Whoop, right there. Same deal for number 132. Awesome. Wave motion, oscillating. I think it's helpful on these simple harmonic motion problems to actually draw a free body diagram. This is a bobber on a fishing deal, so we have some type of circle deal and, and a string coming up. It's going um, up and, or down and up, up and down, whatever you want to say. Uh, it says 1.5 from the total, from the high to the low. We can actually graph this with cosine or sine. I don't know, it just makes sense for me to think of it as cosine, with this middle value being where it uh, would be considered the center of its oscillating oscillations. That means that D is equal to zero, easy stuff. And then it says that 1.5 is the total distance from crest to trough. Well, if 1.5 is the total, then half of that is the amplitude, 0.75. So that is the amplitude, easy enough. Now it says that it repeats high to high, that is the period, as three seconds. So the period is equal to three. That means that this is equal to two pi over B. So if I were solving for B, I would just multiply by B and divide by three. So it's two pi divided by three. There is no phase shift because I've set up my graph conveniently to be cosine. So if I were going to set up an equation, this would be y equals 0.75 cosine, because cosine starts high, ends high, 2 pi over 3 times x, or time, whatever you want to say. And that's it. 13-minute video. Booyah. <laughs>